Welcome back students to Belmont's Math and Science Learning Center lecture series on those key mathematical concepts to help guide you through your graduate study here in the pharmacy program at Belmont. Uh, as always, my name is Brandon and today we are continuing on a lot of the work that we covered in the last few videos on those ideas of ratios and rates and proportions uh, and the problem solving with those setting up proportional equations using these ideas of equivalent rates, equivalent ratios, um, in order to help us solve those kinds of problems. Uh, in particular, we're gonna be looking at one case um, that is used a lot in pharmacy and very much uh, outside of that as well. And that will be the metric system. As you are familiar, the metric system is a very widely used system of units throughout the entire world. Um, and it's used in pretty much everywhere, in every country around the world, um, except for actually three, uh, those being Myanmar, Liberia, and of course the good old US of A, because we have to be different from everybody. It's pretty great. Uh, it was actually developed in France during the French Revolution around the 1790s. Um, and it is very widely used for actually many different types of units. You can use it for length, uh, talking about meters, of course, in volume, using it for liters, weight, grams, time, seconds. All of these different aspects can be related through this system, which relies on the use of special prefixes to denote uh, their relationship basically to each other. Uh, the reason why the metric system is so widely used and why it is so useful um, in our context is because it follows that kind of base 10 structure just like our number system, right? So our digits are always zero through nine. And then once you get past that point, you get to 10, you actually introduce that second digit, right? You go back to zero and then you put a one in that second digit, and then you repeat the process. You go zero to nine. Oh, I hit that. I go. I do that again. The metric system basically follows that same kind of guidelines and relies on that base 10 kind of structure, um, which makes conversion in the metric system itself relatively easy and straightforward. And we're going to see that uh, throughout this kind of presentation. Um, and it's the reason why the metric system is so widely used, especially in scientific exploits like pharmacy, like physics, like chemistry. Um, and it helps kind of bolster that kind of communication. Um, no matter where you're from, it's very easy to kind of communicate these um, ideas between each other. So here is a start for the metric system, kind of the basic outline that you're probably familiar with. You probably learned back in maybe middle school, high school, those kinds of things. Um, where you've got these kind of prefixes over here. Um, base isn't actually a prefix. It's kind of your starting point, right? This is where basically meter goes or liter or gram or second. That's gonna be your baseline. And then all of the other ones are gonna be prefixes that you put in front of it, like a kilometer or a centimeter or a millimeter, those kinds of things. Um, so from biggest town to smallest, you can see that it's kilo, hecto, deca, and then the base unit, deci, centi, and milli. Uh, and of course, everyone tries to memorize it with cool little acronyms. The one that I was taught uh, when I learned this was King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. You know, each of those different letters of those words corresponding to their metric counterparts. So king for kilo, and for hecto, so on and so forth. The way that it kind of works, uh, right, you've got the base and then deca is gonna be basically be 10 times bigger than the base, right? So if you've got one decameter, that's really 10 meters. And then you can continue onward. If you go to hecto, that's actually going to be 10 to the second power or 100 meters. So one hectometer is the same as 100 meters. 
and 10 to the third is going to correspond to the key letter. So that's going to be basically worth 1,000 meters. So these bigger ones are going to correspond, obviously, to bigger numbers of meters. Uh, base, obviously, is going to be, you know, itself, right? One meter is exactly one meter, right? No kind of conversion needed there. Once you get below that, it's going to go kind of in that opposite direction. So like Desi is going to be 10 to the negative one in terms of meters. So it's going to actually be 0.1 meters. One decimeter is the same as 0.1 meters. Centi being 10 to the negative two and milli being 10 to the negative. Notice that really all we've been doing is moving that decimal point. And that's going to be a super key feature that's going to help us convert later on. So as you can see, once you've got kind of the order down, all of this becomes super easy. You just go different powers of 10, like 10 zero up, 10 zero down, all those kinds of things, and see the, those conversions as they are. Now, normally, it's a lot easier to kind of visualize this horizontally, especially if you are a visual learner, uh, this kind of setting it horizontally where you've got those big values on the left, those big prefixes, and working your way to the small uh, is actually going to be super useful when we get into that kind of conversion process. And we'll see that as we move later on with several different examples. Now, these are not all of the different prefixes, obviously. We can go a lot bigger than that, or we can go a lot smaller. Uh, and so to extend that a little bit, here are a few more of those. Um, so you can see that on the upper end, we've added three mega and then giga and then tera. Uh, and then on the smaller end, we've added micro and nano and pico. Um, and so notice that we got, again, the what goes in front of those units, the TG and M. Mu and P. So notice that mu for micro is actually going to be a Greek letter that looks like that, like a little U thing. Uh, I've also seen some people write it as MC. Um, so you might see that when you're reading through things. That just refers to a micro, uh, whatever, micrometer, microliter, all those kinds of things. So I kind of extended my acronym a little bit. We started out with the King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. So I extended a little bit to the great and mighty King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Maybe Nesquik poisoned. Um, so obviously not going to get a Nesquik sponsor, sponsorship here. Um, but it's a kind of funny way of trying to remember all of those different things. The big thing to worry about with adding on this Terra Giga Mega Micro Nova Pico is this is where it starts not just going up by one. You notice that like before, this was corresponding to 10 to the zero, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third. But once you get to mega, giga, and tera, rather than going up just by one power for 10, we're going to go up by three. So like mega is going to correspond to 10 to the sixth, or one million meters. One megameter is one million meters. And giga is going to go up by three again, so 10 to the ninth. So this will be one billion meters. And then tera is going to be 10 to the 12th, or one trillion meters. Uh, and the reason why we kind of do that is exactly the same reason why, you know, Normally, we only focus on the 1,000 and then 1 million and then 1 billion and then 1 trillion. You know, 10,000 and 100,000, we don't really consider as much. It's just based off of the thousand. A thousand and then million, those are kind of our benchmarks. Uh, and so you'll notice that we'll go by three each of those times. And the same thing happens on the lower end, right? So milli gets to 10 to the negative three or 0 0.001. So micro is 10 to the negative six. So put in three more zeros there. One, two, three, four, five zeros to be exact. 
So one micrometer is the same as 0. 0.00001 meters. And then 10 to the negative ninth, and 10 to the negative 12 uh, for Nana and Pico, respectively. So that's just something to kind of remember when you're doing it um, in those like much bigger, much smaller units. Obviously, we're going to be sticking in that kilo to milli kind of range most of the time. However, in pharmacy, oftentimes we're dealing with really, really small amounts of some kind of drug and some kind of compound. So there's a possibility to use micro units, micrograms, microliters, um, rather than just mill, milliliters or milligrams. So that is something to kind of be aware of. And so if you're doing it horizontally, um, I just kind of put like two little dots in there to remind myself, hey, there's space in between the kilo and the mega. And again, we'll see kind of how that's going to be useful in just a second. So now that we've kind of gone through our base understanding of the metric system, let's do some examples. So first, we want to convert 25 millimeters to meters. So notice that the last thing is going to be whatever unit we're talking about. So in this case, we're going to talk about meters, a unit of distance. And then whatever is before it is going to correspond to the um, prefix. So in this case, we're going to have millimeters. So converting 25 millimeters to meters. So if we remember, we've got meters as our kind of base unit, and then millimeters was over there, was three away from that. So the way to kind of think about it, remember this is 10 to the zero and 10 to the negative three millimeters. What we can say is that one meter is going to be the same. Oh, actually I should say 10 to the negative three meters is this mil, 10 to the negative three meters is the same as one millimeter. One millimeter is the same as 10 to the negative three meters. We can also say 1,000 millimeters or 10 to the third millimeters is one meter. Whichever way you want to do it is going to be fine. We want to convert this to meters. So we know how many millimeters we have, right? It's 25. But we don't know how many meters. So we don't know how many meters we have. So we set up 10 to the negative three meters over one millimeter. We know that's a proportion that we've got here. And we put it equal to x over 25. Just setting it up like a proportional equation like we did last video. Now, of course, then we just cross multiply. And so in this case, 25 times 10 to the negative three, we put that in your calculator, and you get 0 0.025 is going to be equal to x. And this, of course, is going to be in meters. And so that is going to be our answer because x times one is x. So 25 times 10, 10 to the negative three, that's just our answer, 0 0.025. And there we go. So now let's see, you know, maybe a simpler way of doing it, especially again, if you're a visual learning learner, this way is going to make a lot more sense. If you like formulas and setting it up the same way every time, proportional equation might be the way to go. But here's an easier way. See how we've got this set up in the top right, right? We've got meters, our base, and here's our millimeters. So notice that we're going from millimeters to meters. So if we are starting at millimeters, we have to move to the left three. So what we're going to do is take the decimal point, which if there isn't one, we just pretend is at the end of our number, and we're going to move it to the left three filling in any zeros if needed. We fill in a zero there. Our decimal point's gonna end up here. And of course we put in our zero before the decimal point as we should always. And so now we are in meters, 0 0.025. Boom, done. We move the decimal point in equal number of spaces in the same direction as we did in our little chart, right? From millimeters to meters, Moving three to the left, we move the decimal point three to the left, and we get the same answer as we did when we did all the proportional equation fancy math stuff. Lots of So let's go in reverse. 
So let's start with 25 meters, go to millimeters. So again, meters is our base. We're going to milli, and we've got two in between. So to get from our base to milli, we have to move right three. So 25 meters, there's our decimal point at the end, because we don't have one currently. It's just assumed to be at the end. We move it to the right three units, filling in any zeros if necessary. And so our answer becomes 25,000, and we are now done. 25 meters is the same as 25,000. And so that's, again, something to kind of look at. So notice that when we went from a smaller thing to a bigger thing, our numerical value became smaller, right? Because we have a bigger unit going here. So that's something to kind of keep track of. Here, we went from a bigger unit, a meter to a millimeter. So we're gonna have more of them. So we have a big numerical value as our answer here. Again, something to kind of keep in mind when you're going back to like double check your work. Am I supposed to have a big number? Am I supposed to have a small number? That's something to keep, tra keep track of. Again, let's do 60 million millimeters to kilometers. So if we remember, base is in the middle. Millimeters is over here. And kilometers is three to the left. We are starting at millimeters, you're going two kilometers. So we're going to be one, two, three, four, five, six to get to kilometers. So if we are starting at 60 million, decimal point at the end, we move six to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, put our decimal point there. We end up just 60 kilometers, big distance. <laughs> but a lot easier to look at rather than 60 million millimeters. We have a better sense somewhat of what 60 kilometers is gonna look like rather than 60 million millimeters. Let's do one more example. Let's convert 0 0.05 meters to nanometers. So we're starting at the base unit going to nanometers, we're going to a smaller thing. So we should end up getting a big result. So, Base is going to go here, nanometers. So we've got deci, centi, milli. And then we have our dot dot, and then we have micro. And then we have our dot dot, and then we have nano. Here is our nano here. So we're going from base to nano. So how many places do we need to move to the right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and nine. Here. Finally, we have our decimal point already there. So don't put it at the end like we did before. So 0 0.05 meters, moving it to the right, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Filling in zeros in all of those places. So this is going to be 50 million man. Is equal to 0 0.05 meters, a very, very small number. Even though we have 50 million of them, it's still 120th of a meter, which is kind of insane when you think about it. And so that is how we work with the uh, metric system. So, screen. so, hopefully, that was a fun little insight into the metric system. Hopefully, it helped kind of know how to navigate the system and kind of go between each of those units. Hopefully those acronyms are gonna be helpful in memorizing how all of those things relate to each other. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to do even more unit conversion utilizing a process known as dimensional analysis. Uh, so look forward to that. See you later.